Hi there, Dominic here. Some more modo fun. This time the radial array. The radial array tool copies the selected geometry into a circular or helix pattern. Let's see this in action. So I already have done some experimenting. Going to Control Z to undo. Shift A. So right now the selected mesh item only contains this cube. And in the duplicate tab you have radial array. So you can choose radial array, instance radial array, replica radial array and transform radial array. Pretty much same options as in previous videos. So first radial array. Click to select it and then click in the viewport to activate the tool. And this is what you get with the settings I had already set. Going to reset my tool in the tool pipe. So right now you see it's only the selected mesh item, the cube, which is being arrayed with a helix generator. Right now the count is 24. I can set it for instance to 2, then I only have one, two array elements. When I set it to 10, I have 10 array elements, so the number. Then I have my axis. Right now it's on Z. I can set it to X. Now it's on the X axis, on the Y axis, and on the Z axis. I can set axis for X, Y and Z numerically over here. But I can also drag these sliders in the viewport. I can set, give it a start angle over here, 0, and an end angle is right now is 360. But I can also drag this slider, so when I hover over this line here, click and drag. Sorry about that. Then I should be able, yep, yeah, should be able to drag in a circular motion and adjust the end angle. And when I click on the cube, I should be able to, in a circular motion, click and drag the start angle. The other crosshair over here lets me adjust the action center. You see the values changing over here. So originally this symbol and that symbol for start and end angle and this symbol for action center were overlapping. So this can make it a bit difficult to select the right one, but you can set them numerically over here, start angle, end angle and action center. But it's always fun to do this interactively in the viewport. So I'm going to set the start angle to 0 and my end angle to 360 numerically. I'm going to give it a count of 20. And going back to a Z direction. The offsets... OK, I'm back, sorry about that. Just been playing around with the offset a bit. So with zero offsets, and I had a count of, of 20, I believe, I have this result. Right now it's an X. I'm going to set it back in Z. doesn't really matter. So my start angle was zero, my end angle is 360. When I give it an offset, I can create a spiraling effect. So for instance, I'm going to set this at 20 meters, and a bit more, 50 meters. Now you see you have an array which gives me kind of a DNA helix, however it's called. But, oh, I had original 360 degrees with an offset of 50 meters. When it's a zero, it's just this cylindrical form. And remember, I can adjust the action center like that. But when I give it an end angle which is greater than 360, for instance, 3600, and then you see the action 
center change and offset of for instance 20 meters and make it a bit longer 50 meters you see it becomes a spiraling effect and when I increase my count for instance 200 now it's like a spiral so just like the curve extrude tool where you can set an, an offset and an end angle which is greater than 360 you get kind of a spring form but in this case the geometry is not being extruded but the geometry is kind of being rayed along that spiral so for, for instance 100 it's less obvious if you look at it like that in the viewport you have the separate if you see the 200 it's more obvious that it's actually a spiral like that so this is the offset I'm set it back at 360 now I have on only one revolve and a count of 200 which may be much for one revolve still a little much 50 25 like that so it can be very useful to create specific types of radial arrays going to set it back to 3600 and give it a count of 200 over here um, I can set it to replace source with replace source right now it doesn't isn't feasible but uh, in other setups then the original one will be re replaced invert polygons to flip my polygons merge vertices and then merge vertice distance and I can set my source to active meshes which right now is this cube or to a specific mesh when over in mesh item then is cylinder is selected so then my cylinder mesh will be chosen or maybe this item so you can set it to a specific mesh you can set it to all background layers I am not going to do this be careful with that because if I choose all background layers then each array element will be populated with each background element which is visible and as you can see right now I have a, f a fair number of uh, elements in my array a count of 200 and if I were to say background layer all background layers over here then it could become very stressful on my system maybe it's not a problem but I'm not going to choose this random background layer is an interesting one this will choose one of the background layers so now in my layers over different layers you see the items over here this is these items now with random background layer one of those items is being allocated to the radial array as you can see like that and I can set my action center over here interactively like that or as I said in earlier videos also I can do it numerically over here so that was random background preset shape again when you choose this one now right now it doesn't do anything but if you press F6 on your keyboard and go to profiles you can select the profile and then the array will be populated with those profiles um, so I'm going back to random background layer it's kind of fun so actually uh, end angle because that box start angle the crosshairs action center by clicking and dragging on them you can set them interactively so start angle that line end angle number of counts 400 now it becomes a bit more obvious source active meshes like that hope you get the idea
going to stop for a moment. Okay, I'm back. And just as I've explained in a previous video, you can use the radial array, but the transform radial array. Again, I have to, in item mode, first select a couple of items. I don't have to select all of them, just the ones I want. Click, right click on radial array and choose transform radial array. Click in the viewport. So again, I have my action center that I can adjust, my axis that I can interactively choose. I can set the axis over there. And as you can see, the elements, the items that have been chosen, have been selected, will be allocated to the radial array. Um, right now, I have far too little items to actually really get a useful view of that. But just as with the transform array, I can use a transform radial array. So make sure to watch that video if you want to know more about it. I can make so I can make a transform radial array to populate a radial array with items in the item list. So to populate it with it and well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm blabbering a bit, I'm sorry about that, but actually you can look at this with the transform radial array. These items are actually being transformed to that position. So, you see, the ones that have been selected are no longer down here. They have actually been transformed to that position. Whereas with, uh, I'm going to Z to undo, whereas with um, a simple radial array click and set it to random background layer right now you see the, these originals are still there they are not being transformed it just the radial array is just going to choose one of these items and copy them into the radial array whereas with the transform radial array these items are actually being transformed so i hope this makes a bit sense um, play around it. It's, it's actually fun. Uh, the only thing you have to mind sometimes, you can see it over here, the action center which highlights now and the start angle and sometimes also the end angle are actually in one place so you have to be careful which one you select. So now I'm selecting the start angle and now I'm actually selecting the action center. So this can be a bit confusing and a bit difficult, but once you know that these symbols can be at the same place, I'm going to decrease my count a bit to 100. Knowing that these symbols can be overlapping makes it easier to understand what is going on. So, hope this makes a bit sense, and uh, bye for now. This was Dominic.